Hi and welcome everyone. In this uh, video, I want to go over the percentiles, chordiles, five number summary, box plot, and stem and leaf plot of a given simple data. Now we learned about the uh, mean standard deviation, median, and all that. So we're going to analyze a simple data in a different way. So first of all, let's talk about percentile. So what is a percentile? Let me give you an example. For example, you take a state test and you get your result and it says your score is 90th percentile. What's the meaning of that? That means you did better than 90% of the people who took the test and you did worse than 10% uh, of the people who took the test. If 1,000 people took the same test, you did better than 900 uh, people taking the same test. So these are percentiles. Now, if the data is large, it's done in a different way. But uh, when we deal with a simple data, like 10 to 15 or 30 numbers, then it's calculated a little bit differently. So let's go over that and uh, learn how we can calculate those. First of all, if you're given a data, so this was a simple data we saw last time, and let's say these are test scores, and they go from two to 99. So, and you can, uh, the first thing you wanna do when you deal with percentiles is write the data in ascending order. That means from smaller to the largest value in the data and number them. So one, two, three, four, five. So we have 15 numbers in this data. And uh, that's our, basically, this is a sample. This is our sample size, which is N. Now the, this question, again, I put 11 because uh, we did the 10 uh, past about standard deviations, usual, unusual data, but this is another way of analyzing the data. So the question says, what is the percentile of the data value 79? That means what's the percentile of that number? The formula for that is number of values before X. And just remember our X here is 79 because that's in the question, divided by N, which is the sample size, and you multiply that by 100. So how many numbers do we have before 79? So if 79 is here, don't take 10. Before 79, we have nine numbers. So you just count them, it's nine. So it's nine divided by 15 times 100, and that's 60. The way you write that, you say P60 is, 79. This is always the percentage or the percentile. So, and the way you say that, you say 79 is the 60th percentile. That means 60% of the numbers in that simple data, they are less than 79. There's another example here, find the percentile of 45. So again, you take the number of values before 45, you divide that by the sample size and you multiply it by 100. Let's check our data. So before 45, 45 is right here. And before 45, we have four numbers. So we do four divided by 15. Remember that's our sample size times 100 and you get 26. 0.7 and always round it up. So you put 27 and the way you say that is P27 is 45 or 45 is the 27th percentile. Now, if we wanna go backwards, we wanna know what P80 is, what number is the 80th percentile. To do that, you have to find the location of that number in the data. So the formula is P divided by 100 and times N, which is the sample size. 
So we want PAD. So you take 80 divided by 100 and you multiply that by 15 and you get exactly 12. And you have to be careful with this detail because when you get a whole number, you don't just take the 12th number in the data. You take the 12th number plus the 13th number and you divide that by two. Now, if we go to our data, let's see what those numbers are. So the 12th number is 89. The 13th number is 92. So you take the average of these two numbers. And don't forget, do not take the 12th number, take the, when, when the answer is a whole number. So when you take the average of 89 plus 92 divided by two, you get 90.5. So you can say P80 is 90.5, or you can say 90.5 is the 80th percentile. Let's do another example. Find 45th percentile or P45. Again, the location of that number is gonna be 45 divided by 100 times 15, which is the sample size. And here it's a little bit different because we got 6.75 and that's a decimal. It's very different when you find a decimal. If it's a decimal, you take the next number. So if I got 6.75, I go to my data and I pick the seventh number. And I put a note here, it doesn't matter. Even if it's 6.0001, don't take the sixth number, you take the next number, which is the seventh number. So let's go and find the seventh number in our data. The seventh number here is 68. So then you can write P45 equals to 68. If you wanna find P40, that's another example. Let's go over this same thing. The location is 40 divided by 100 times 15 and we got six. Remember this is a whole number. If it's a whole number, you don't take that number. You take the sixth number plus the seventh number and you divide that by two. And I have the same data here for you. The sixth number is 51. The seventh number is 68. You average that and you get 59.5. So you write, <clears throat> so if you wanna write that, then you can say P, 40 is 59.5 or 59.5 is the 40th percentile. There is, as again, another example, P85 location is gonna be 85 divided by 100 times 15, and you take 12.75. This is a decimal. So you take the 13th number. So those little two details, please don't forget. And the, the 13th number in the data is 92. So you can write P85 equals to 92. Now let's talk about the five number summary. What are the five number summary? The first one is the lowest value. The second one is Q1. Q1 reads as the first quartile and that's the same thing as P. 25, it's like quarters and cents. One quarter is 25 cents. So Q1 is P25. Then Q2 is the second quartile, and that's P50. And this is just gonna give you the mean, median of the data. Q3 is the third quartile, and that's P75. So, and we're gonna find all this. And the fifth number, the five number summary, the fifth number is the highest value in the data, which is 99. Let's go ahead and find those. You do exactly the same way. If I wanna find Q1, just find the P25. So it's gonna be 25 divided by 100 times 15. You get 3.75. So you take the next number, the fourth number in the data and that number is 42. So it's 
right here. So let's do that. So this is Q1. Q2 is P50, so 50 divided by 100 right here times 15, 7.5, and you take the eight number. The eight number in the data is 75. That's Q2, and it's the same thing as the med median. Q3, which is P75, so you do 75 divided by 100 times 15, and you get 11.25, so you take the 12th number. The 12th number in the data is 89. So now if I do this is the lowest, that's Q1, that's Q2, that's Q3 and 99 is the highest value in the data. So these are our five number summaries. So, and I put it here, lowest value is two, Q1 is 42, Q2 is 75, Q3 is 89, and the highest value in the data is 99. Now, let's talk about the box plot. How you draw the box plot, the box plot, you use the five number summary. So, and then uh, let me show it to you and I'll show you how you can draw this. So again, we have the lowest value. We have Q1, we have Q2, we have Q3, and we have the highest value. So if you wanna draw the box plot, make a scale that matches the data. These are test scores. So the best scale we can have going from zero to 100. So then you start with the lowest value, which is two, and don't forget two is right here. Then you can just leave that right there. Then you come and you start the box with Q1. Q1 is 42, so it's almost here, 42. You start the box and you finish the box at Q3 which is 89, so it's here, it's 89. And once you put 42 and 89, then you can draw the box. And somewhere inside the box, you're gonna find Q2. And Q2 is 75, so it's between 70 and 80. And you draw that and you show it's Q2. And you put a line for the highest value here and you can just connect. These are the whiskers, we call them those nine. Now let's analyze this. If I look at this, uh, most numbers are concentrated. If I look at this box plot, I'm concentrated here. So after 40, uh, it is not a bad test. So, and uh, if I draw this, the concentration of the numbers are cool. They go like that. And we say this is skewed left. So if the box plot was here, then that's a very good test. If the box plot is here, then that's not a very good exam. So that's how you can analyze the box plot. Now types of data you can have, if the concentration of numbers are to the right, then you say it's skewed left. If the concentration of numbers are to the left, then you say it's skewed right and sometimes the concentration is right in the middle it's symmetric so you say the data is symmetric next we want to know if there are any outliers in the data outliers are not the same as unusual numbers so it's done differently and sometimes outliers they can change the mean so sometimes statisticians they find the outliers and they just don't count them in the calculation. An outlier could be a very large number or a very small number that does not match the data. So how do you find the outliers? First, you have to find the interquartile range, IQR. And the formula for that is Q3 minus Q1. Our Q3 was 89 minus Q1, which was 42, and you get 47. 
then you find the lower fence. The lower fence, this is the formula for the lower fence. It's Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. Some books, they use two, but 1.5 is good enough. So Q1, we have Q1 is 42 minus 1.5 will be there always. And IQR, we found it. So if you do that, you get negative 28.5. Then you find the upper fence. The upper fence is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. Q3 was 89 and plus 1.5 and IQR is 47. So if you do that, you get 159.5. Then you can just draw a line and then put your lower fence, which was negative 28.5, and put your upper fence, which is 159.5. And any data value before negative 25, this region, or after 159.5, is an outlier for that data. Our data went from the lowest two to highest 99 so this data does not have an outlier so you say therefore just remember those three dots in mathematics mean therefore therefore there is no outlier in the data last thing i want to talk about is the stem and leaf plot so how do you draw that you put your stems on the left side and your leaves on the right side and you can draw this line and this data goes from zero to 100 or 99 so you start with zero then you do one two three four five six seven eight and nine so let's look at our data what we have is two so you place two here to the right side, to the column where it says leaves. Then we have nothing between 10 and 19 and 20 and 29. The next number is 39. So it's 39. Then we have 42, 42, 45. So it's 42, 42, and 45. Then the next number is 51. So you put 50 and the one on the right side then it's 68 it's right here and it's then we have 75 78 and 79 so this is where we put them 75 78 and 79 then the next numbers are 82 and 89 and 82 and 89 then Finally, we have 92, 95, and 99. So we put 92, 95, and 99. So this is our stem and leaf plot. Now, if you can kind of see the concentration of numbers. So if I draw this and I kind of flip it, then that's but you see the most constant the numbers are concentrated like there it's skewed uh, skewed left so all right uh, this is that's it for this video please watch this video a couple of times and uh, try some more examples and uh, i'll see you in my next video thank you for watching have a great one everybody bye bye